I am Tyler's mama. And um, yesterday we came to the Awana event and some little kids, oh, it was fun. And some of the little children were running up saying hello to Tyler. And I got down to one of the little boys and I said, hey, I'm Tyler's mama. And the little boy went, <laughs> like, Tyler has a mama? <laughs> yes, I am his mom. And I am very thankful for a son who loves the Lord and I'm very thankful that he has always just wanted to serve the Lord. I, I, you know, growing up in a pastor's home, my husband is a pastor, and you'll hear him tonight. He's preaching. And um, I always tell him, I said, you know, honey, even if your message is not really good, they'll look at you because you're so good looking. So <laughs> you just wait. Your eyeballs are going to drop out of your head. But anyway... <laughs> Tyler is a joy, and I'm so thankful uh, that God has given him to me, along with my beautiful daughter-in-law, Kayla, and I know that she um, is a blessing as well. So um, I could park right there and brag on my kids, but I, I'm just going to not talk about that anymore, and we'll go into uh, the lesson. But don't you love to laugh first, you know? Yeah. I, I've read that laughter burns five calories. Oh, yeah, let's laugh. I do not know if it's true, but I read it in a doctor's office, so I just want to believe that it's true. And the pastor and his sweet wife took us out last night, and we ate a little too much. And um, I just think I need to laugh a little bit this morning. It would help me. Um, so I, I was teasing Tyler. I said, Tyler, I, your mama is getting old. I can't see good anymore. I'm, I'm just, things are happening. Does anybody, can I get a witness? You know, you get in that mid-40 range and everything starts falling apart. 45 and I'm like, I'm 45 and I said, my mercy, I'm, I, I can't, things are happening. So this is my life. If my body were a car, this is the time I'd be thinking about trading it in for a newer model. I've got bumps and dents and scratches in my finish, and my paint job is getting a little dull. But that's not the worst of it. My headlights are out of focus, and it's especially hard to see things up close. My traction is not as graceful as it once was. I slip and slide and skid and bump into things, even in the best of weather. My white walls are stained with varicose veins. It takes me hours to reach my maximum speed. My fuel rate burns inefficiently, but here's the worst of it. This is the really bad part. Almost every time I sneeze, cough, or sputter, <laughs> either my radiator leaks or my exhaust backfires. <laughs> so, I don't know if I can get a witness there with anybody, but um, things happen. <laughs> oh my things happen. We grow up. <laughs> Isn't it a joy that we can laugh and have a good time and be together as Christians today? And it is truly my joy and privilege to be here. I'm a nothing. I'm a nobody. And as you listen to me, you'll know that I will um, slaughter the English. I am a country girl for sure. You are too? Good, Miss Denoff. We're country girls. All right. Tyler said, Mama, they may not understand some of the things you say, so <laughs> if you need an interpreter, <laughs> Becca, help me, okay? You'll see on the handout that we've passed out to you a lesson that I'd like to share with you this morning wrapped in the security of God's Word. There is no better thing in life than to be wrapped in the security <laughs> of God's Word. God's Word is incredible. It is just, there's, no, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it at all. And I'm going to share some points with you today that I hope will be an encouragement to you. So can we pray together first, and then we'll jump right into this lesson, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, how I thank you for this opportunity to be here today. Lord, my, my emotions are stirred, as I know this is the place where my son and daughter-in-law are serving you, and how thankful I am for that. And Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to share with these ladies, to encourage them in their walk with you. Lord, may you guide my tongue, and may I say only those things you want me to say, and leave out those things that you do not want me to say, Lord. 
Help me to be a blessing and an encouragement to each lady today. In Jesus' name, I pray that your word will be heard and the ladies' hearts will be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we read that first verse together, um, Joshua 1.8? And if your headlights are out of focus, grab your glasses, okay? <laughs> Let's read it out loud together. It's on the paper, Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thy way be prosper prosperous, and then shalt have good success. Did I, did I leave out a word? <laughs> that Was that typed wrong? And then thou shalt have good success. Good. All right, we got it. Great verse. Great verse. How many of you have heard the verse before? Have you really meditated on that verse before? Really thought about what it says? If you want your way to be prosperous and if you want to have success in life, we have to meditate on the Word of God, wrapped in the security of His Word. If you've ever made the decision to seek an intimate relationship with God and to obey Him, no matter what, you will undoubtedly experience seasons of difficulty and uncertainty in life. Your walk with God is a journey of faith, isn't it? All right, now y'all going to have to help me. You know, if you don't like it, just nod and smile at me anyway. It'll help me, okay? Our walk is a walk of faith, trusting the Lord. There'll be situations where we'll be tested and we'll go through hard times. What are you going to cling to when a rainstorm of trouble comes your way and everything you know true seems to be swept away by the intense winds of adversity? What are you going to cling to when troubles come? What will you hold on to when the waves of doubt threaten and crash on, in on you? What are you going to do? There's going to be times like that that you're going to have hard times in life. Does it, has anybody ever had one? What do we cling to? We have, if we want strength, if we want to make it, we're going to have to cling to the Lord and to his word. We have to. I didn't bring it with me because I don't want to lose it as I travel, but my father, when he passed away, gave each one of his children one of his Bibles. And I love it. I cherish it. There's no amount of money. There, I, I would never get rid of it. It's just like a chunk of gold to me. His handwritten notes are inside of it. Bible verses highlighted and marked that encouraged him in his walk with the Lord. I love to open it up and read it and look at it. I cried so when he gave it to me, and I have seen even tear-stained pages of my dad's own tears on the scriptures and how precious that is to me. And what an encouragement that is to me as his child to know when my dad weathered storms, what did he hold on to? It was the word of God, and it helped him, it anchored him, and it kept him safe and secure. I want that for my children. I'm working on that, Bibles that I will leave for each of them. So the Bible is an incredible, incredible book. Clouds and storms are inevitable in our lives. And as human beings, hurts and pains and bumps and bruises and disappointments and sorrows come bundled along with our birth certificates. Isn't that just real exciting to hear? But it is true. And if you don't know the Lord and you don't lean upon his word, you're not going to make it. You have to be anchored in God's word and wrapped in the security of his word. So the first thing I want us to look at is the Bible is immensely comforting. The Bible is immensely comforting. If you have a pen and want to fill these in, I think it will be of help to you. Immensely comforting. I-M-M-E-N. <laughs> I-M-M-E-N-S-E-L-Y. The Bible is immensely comforting. I don't know about you, but there have been nights when my heart has been so broken that my only consolation was to get up to grab my Bible and read a passage of scripture and just let it soothe my heart and my soul. Has anyone ever been there? Middle of the night, disturbed by maybe some things that are going on in your life. You can't sleep, you're tossing and turning. Most of the time I can't sleep tossing and turning because my husband's sawing logs, but I don't know. Does anybody else's husband saw logs? <laughs> 
But, you know, you, you lay there and you're hurting. And it seems like that Satan just wants to throw everything at you and just flood your mind with fear and doubt. And all that I know to do is get up and grab my Bible and say, you know what, I'm going to go fill myself up with the Word of God. I love the scripture, Psalm 57, 1. I think Miss Denoff is going to read that for us this morning. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me. For my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Isn't that a beautiful verse? Think about the shadow of his wings being your refuge until these calamities or until these hurts and these problems be overpassed, that God is going to have his wings hovering over you. That is the verse one night that I read. I opened my Bible, I started reading the Psalms, and that verse was like a neon light one night when I was really hurting and I read it, and I thought, oh, Jesus, thank you for being my refuge, the shadow of your wings I'm going to hide under. And it was amazing. I went back in the bedroom, tried to creep in the bed without waking Rick up. And when I walked in the room, there was a shadow in the corner of the bedroom. And it was, it was our lamp making a shadow. But, ladies, the shadow looked just like the wings of Almighty God, the way the shadow was hitting, it was like someone was standing there like this. And it was just the lamp, I know, and I'm not, listen, I'm not losing it, okay? <laughs> there really wasn't someone there, but it looked like it to me. And I thought, Lord, how incredible. I walked in and I saw that after I just had read that verse about being under his wings, and I thought, I know that that's just probably the shadow of the lamp, but God, thank you for letting me see that tonight. And I got back in the covers and nestled down and fell asleep. The Bible is truly immensely comforting. Do you read and meditate on the Bible every day so that the Lord can bring his word to your mind when you need to be reminded of his love and comfort? God's word can be an anchor of strength, guidance, and comfort to keep us steady. And I'm sure you would say with me, you do not know what you would do without the word of God. God sends us storms and pains, I believe, in our life to draw us closer to Him. And it causes us to cuddle up on the couch with Him and to open His Word and to just fill our minds and our bodies with the Word of God. So first of all, what I want to just emphasize to you is the Bible is truly comforting. And we should read it like it's the only book God ever wrote. Because it is. <laughs> Think about it. We should read it that way. I'll never forget being in California at a conference and this man came running up. He was a newly saved um, gentleman. And he came running up to the pastor and he said, Pastor, I'm going down to the church bookstore right now and I can't wait to get me my King George Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I got so tickled at him. I said, oh, he's a new Christian and he meant to say James, but he said George. And it, got, it was so funny. I'm going to get my King George Bible. <laughs> I said, go get, go get it, man. Go get that King George. Tell me what it says. <laughs> but, you know, I, Tyler said that y'all showed a video, uh, in the, I guess, in the past few weeks that I wanted so bad to, for him to let me show you today. But he said, Mom, they've already seen it. But how many of you saw the clip of um, the, the people in China where they smuggled in the Bibles? Remember that? Oh, my word. We were watching that the other night. My husband and I were just bawling. How that they were opening up, unzipping those suitcases and pulling out those Bibles. And they were kissing the Bibles and just going, oh, oh, and just hugging the Bibles. And I think about us today who probably have 15, 20 Bibles laying around our home. And most of them are covered in dust because we don't have time for the word of God. Yet there's people who are starving for the word of God who literally are kissing the pages of God's word. And I want to encourage you today, grab your Bible up and kiss it. It might do you some good. God's word is immensely comforting. Number two, the promises of the Bible give us hope. Isn't that encouraging? The promises of the Bible give us hope. Who has Joshua 1, 9 for me? Okay. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, 
neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Now isn't that a promise? The Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. That ought to give you the Holy Ghost bumps right there. <laughs> he is with you. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, He's with you. His presence is so real. I just love that. I love that. When I may be alone and maybe no one is with me in the car or at home or whatever, God is with me all the time. He's around me all the time, wrapping his loving arms around me. And when we need to feel his presence and be assured of his love, Scripture always reminds us that we can never lose what the Father has freely given us, and that is his promises. There are so many promises in the Bible. There's enough for us to claim at least, I think it is anywhere from 10 to 15 a day for the whole year. Now that is incredible. When I think about that, that, I think about just old country girls saying, we used to say, when you couldn't believe something like, wow, that's incredible, we'd say, saw me down and call me shorty. <laughs> saw me down and call me shorty. We can obtain all of those promises every day. I taught y'all something. Yo, you Did, really? I'm Tennessee. Yes, ma'am. Tennessee girl, <laughs> saw me down and call me shorty. It is incredible to think, honestly, that as a child of the King, we have so many promises that God never breaks. He never, ever, ever breaks His promises. People will break their promises. People will hurt you and people will let you down. But God will never let you down. And He promises that He will be with you, He will comfort you, and He is there for you. Consider God's promises your spiritual anchors. Just as, I don't know if any of you have ever been on a cruise um, and been in a boat rocking, it's not a comfortable thing. And you want Him to anchor that boat and keep you steady. God's promises are your spiritual anchors. God always keeps His promises. And we need to be willing and patient to wait for God to fulfill His promises. Sometimes things don't come just when we want them. Anybody like to wait? No, no. no, thank you. I don't like to wait at all. But God sometimes says, hold on, my child. Hold on. Joy will come in the morning. Hold on. We have to wait sometimes, but God always fulfills his promises. And he always meets our needs. Isn't it incredible? God promises to meet our needs. And sometimes he even does incredible things and meets our wants. Isn't that incredible? I mean, that just, it, it blows my mind away. I, I don't have time to tell you our life story here recently, but um, my husband pastored in North Carolina for 10 years. In the last, uh, September 2012, my husband resigned the church due to awful, hurtful things that our church did to us. Basically tormented us for two years. It was a very, very awful situation. I don't say that for you to look at me like you are right now. I don't want you to feel sorry for me because God is good. Amen. Even in the midst of pain and hurting, and I've cried buckets of tears, but do you know that God sees every tear that falls? He knows exactly what's been done to you, and he's incredible, and he will meet your every need. My husband literally has not had a paycheck since December of 2012. He's worked part-time jobs. We've lived by faith. But can I tell you again, it's awesome what God has done. I say, Rick, this has been horrible in a way. But at the same time, it has been so awesome for me to see how God has proven to our family his faithfulness. I have to just tell you one story because this one will just make you want to shout. It is good. I was in Walmart walking around trying to get the few groceries I needed. And Rick said, you only have this amount of money right now. And I said, this is so weird. I'm in Walmart walking around. I'm like, this is all I have. This is crazy. I've, I'm used to going in Walmart and buying what I want to get. Walking around in the Walmart, I'd put that back. I can't get that. 
mm -mm, I don't have it. Then I wanted, I got over the laundry detergent and I said, I need laundry detergent. Laundry detergent's expensive, you know? Family dollar's better. Family dollar's better. <laughs> well, I saw the laundry detergent. I was like, oh, Jesus, I need laundry detergent. I'm down to my last bit. And then I knew I don't have the money to get the laundry detergent. Well, I started crying like a baby in the Walmart. Aww. I did. I broke down. I started crying. I said, this is ridiculous. I cannot believe this. This is so hurtful. Why am I having to live like this? And why, why this? And why this? And the pain that's been inflicted upon my family. And I was just crying. And I started walking out the Walmart just sort of mad. You know what I mean? Anybody ever get that way? I'm confessing. <laughs> Miss Denoff, I was a bad girl. I've been that way. <laughs> I was just walking out of that car and said, Jesus, I don't like this. And I'm walking approaching my car and about where that first chair is right there there's a gallon huge got thing of laundry detergent in the road <laughs> and I started going <laughs> so oh I'm losing it <laughs> so I'm really losing it I get closer and there's laundry detergent huge sitting right there and I was like oh my word and I said, Jesus, Jesus, did you just send this laundry detergent for me? And then I said, oh, no, this is Candid Camera. They're doing one of those shows. What would you do, you know? So I went over by it, and I'm looking around, seeing if anybody going to come back for it. Well, then I backed up. No one came. No one came. I stood there, and I thought, no one's coming. There's no cameras. Nothing's happening. I said, Jesus, it is you. You've done this for me. Now, somebody dropped that off their cart, but God allowed them to drop it off because I needed it more than they did. Right. Amen. I ran over there and picked that thing up and threw it in my trunk and jumped in the car and put my seatbelt on. I said, whoa, hallelujah. I was so happy. I said, Jesus, you are so good to me, even when I act like a little brat. Yep. I love that. God's promises are true. He will supply all of your needs. He will take care of you. And as we wrap ourselves in the security of God's word, we can hold on to those promises. I just want to encourage you with that today. Number three, the Bible is a light for our path. The Bible is a light for our path. In the fall of the year, Linda, a young woman, was traveling alone up a rugged highway. And Linda didn't know you don't travel that area in a rundown Honda Civic. So she set off by herself on this adventure. The first evening, she found a room in the mountains near the summit and asked for a 5 a.m. wake-up call so she could get an early start. She couldn't understand why the clerk looked surprised at that request, but as she awoke to the early morning fog shrouding the mountaintops, then she understood. Not wanting to look foolish, she got up and went to breakfast. After breakfast, two truckers asked Linda where she was headed. She said, I'm headed to a little town called White Horse. They said, in that little white Honda Civic? No way. This pass is dangerous in weather like this. She said, well, I'm determined to try. He said, well, then I guess we're just going to have to hug you the trucker said. She said, you ain't touching me. <laughs> she threw her hands back. He said, no, no, that's a trucker's term. What that means is one of us will be in front of you and the other one will be behind you. That way you can see the lights in front of you from our truck and then you can see the lights behind you to escort you through the foggy, frightening mountains. Linda was able to make her way safely through the fog because she trusted the truckers and stayed close to them. During treacherous times in our lives, the only way we'll survive is by trusting the Lord and staying close to His Word. And His Word will light our path. I think I asked someone over here to read that scripture for me, Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Isn't that a great scripture? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Aren't you thankful for little lights? I love lamps, I love candles, and I love night lights, especially when 
you do hit this age of your radiator leaking. <laughs> In the middle of the night when you got to go to the bathroom, aren't you thankful for a little night light so you don't hang your toe on a dresser or whatever? Little lights can help us along our path. And God's Word is a light that lights our path. And we must stay in His Word if we want direction and we want Him to show us the way to go. I don't know about you, but I want completely what God wants for me. And if we're not in His Word, then we're not going to be able to hear from Him and to know His direction for us. So His Word is like a flashlight that we're just going along with. And, and we need that light to direct us. We need that light. I'll never forget um, a while back I was at um, a friend's house in Montana. I don't know if you've ever heard of Chad and Marcia Shear. They're on television. They're hunters and they have a TV program. And one night we were, um, we were buzzing around being crazy and, and they have all these big, huge animals in their house, stuffed bears and all this stuff that they've shot. Well, they said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play a flashlight, um, hide in the dark flashlight, whatever. And I'm like, what? You know, they're, they're in their 40s. And I'm like, I don't do this. This is not something we're going to do. And they say, oh, yeah, this is what we're going to do. So they give us all these little flashlights, and we're running through the house playing hide and seek and, with these little flashlights. Well, let me tell you, girls, I ran slap into that bear <laughs> with my flashlight. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know. But I'm glad I had that little light to guide me through, or I would have gotten hurt on the staircase, on many things in their house. Antlers, Antlers yes. And again, God's Word is our light for our path. If you are not in God's Word, you're not going to have the light that you need to direct your path. So let me encourage you this morning to remember that God's Word is a light for your path. And you must stay in it, stay close to Him, to know the direction He wants you to go. Number four, the Bible shows us how God works in our lives. The Bible shows us how God works in our lives. Romans 15, 4. Who had that one? Whatsoever things were written for time were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have. Isn't that an awesome verse? I love that verse. You can dissect that verse and really get a lot out of it. Think about that. The Scriptures were written for our learning. The scriptures were written for us to gain from, to learn from, and they bring comfort and they bring hope. We may feel confused about what God is trying to show us or why he would allow certain challenges to arise in our lives, but by studying the lives of biblical saints, we can understand how he's growing our faith and conforming us into the image of Christ. My husband said once in a message, there is no testimony without a test. It's a great statement. There is no testimony without a test. How many of you can think of some people in the Bible that went through some hard times? Anybody over here? David. David. Jonah. Jonah. Joseph. Job. Anybody here? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. <laughs> yeah. Anybody in this section know of anybody that you can think of? Moses. Okay. Abraham. All right, you're saying a lot of them. I think of these. Daniel in the lion's den. That was a bad day. <laughs> I, that was a really bad day. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Ooh, think about that one. Thrown in that fire. But what happened, girls? What happened? The Lord showed up. Is that not incredible? What did the man say? I thought I threw three in there. Well, saw me down and call me shorty. There's another one. <laughs> and who was the other one? God. It was God himself protecting them. Think about David and Goliath, Naomi and Ruth. What about that story? Incredible. You know, she's out there just gathering some of the leftovers. God's supplying her needs. And who shows up? Big, bad, Boaz. Ooh. He just sounds good looking, don't he? <laughs> don't he? Boaz. 
He just sounds good looking to me. And Ruth sounds pretty to me too. And how God brought them together. God does incredible things. They went through hard times. But in the end, God did something incredible. Mary and Martha, what about that? Lazarus is dead. Lord, if you just would have been here. But God shows up when he wants to show up. And that's always the best time. It may not be when we want, but we can learn what the Bible shows us in the Bible, how God can work in our lives, how he worked in the lives of others. And it's so encouraging, so encouraging. John 21, 25 says that there's not enough books to even contain everything for us to, to learn. There's not even enough. We, there, we couldn't learn it all. We got so much more. We're going to meet people in heaven that we never even read about. Isn't that going to be neat? Because there's just not enough books to contain it all. And of course, I can't help but think about Joseph, my favorite story in the Bible. I love this story. It's been so dear to my heart in these recent times in my life. And you think about how he said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I love this statement. When you are going through something and you feel alone and wonder where God is, Remember, the teacher is always quiet during the test. He's there, but he's quiet during the test. God is at work in our lives. Isn't that exciting? Can y'all just smile at me right now? God is at work in your life. He's at work in my life. I don't understand what in the world he's doing, but you know what? I'm going to choose to trust him. Because he promises me in his word that he will never leave me. He's there for me. And the scriptures are so comforting. And they help me. And I just don't know what I'd do without the word of God. It is wonderful. And number five, in closing, through the Bible, we are blessed with God's viewpoint about our circumstances. Through the Bible, we are blessed with God's viewpoint about our circumstances. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give me an expected end. Isn't that an exciting verse? For I know the thoughts I think towards you, my child. They're not of evil, but of peace, to give you an expected end. You may not understand the viewpoint about what's going on, God's viewpoint about everything, but God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And do you know that the devil does not want you to be in the Word of God? He'll do everything he possibly can to keep you from having a personal time with the Lord. He'll have the baby scream. He'll have the phone ring. He'll have someone knock on the door. There's just so many things he'll try to do to distract you because no one is more aware of the power of God and His Word than Satan himself. He was in heaven and was an angel of heaven himself. And he knows who spoke the world into existence. And he does all he can, get this, in his limited power. In his limited power. I just want to say that real loud so he can hear it. In his limited power to hide the truth from the hurting and the weak. He doesn't want you to have healing. He doesn't want you to have hope. He doesn't want you to re wrapped in the security of God's word and rest in his promises. He wants to mess you up. That's what he wants to do. Your relationship with God will never be any stronger than your relationship with God's word. God's word is truth. You can rest in every word. God's word is the truth that we should live by. There's some wise quotes that I've heard people say about the Bible. Here's one. So many people mark their Bibles, but don't let it mark them. Think about that. We're quick to underline and mark, but are you letting it mark you? Alexander McLaurin said, He who has the Holy Spirit in his heart and the Scripture in his hands has everything he needs. And that's true. I love the statement at the bottom of your paper. Can you read it with me? A Bible that is falling apart is usually in the hands of one who isn't. What a great statement. Therefore, read the Bible, meditate on the Bible, find comfort in its pages, and believe its promises. Apply it to your life and trust your Heavenly Father. Wrap yourself in the security of God's Word. I'm going to close with this little story. I have two minutes. 
Am I doing good, Becca? Two minutes. Are you with me? Will you hang on two more minutes? <laughs> the most popular security blanket of modern times belonged to a character by the name of Linus. Remember the Peanuts cartoon back in September 19... Uh, September 19th, 1952, it was one of the most favorite cartoon series, The Peanuts. And I just loved Linus. He was just cute. You know, he was, um, he was quiet and he was the smart little grown-up one, but he always was holding on to his blankie. <laughs> the famous little blanket. If the blanket had been real and not a figment of the writer Charles Schultz's imagination, millions of Peanuts fans would have bid um, for, for little pieces of the blanket. Do you know what? Isn't it wonderful as a Christian to know we have a far greater security blanket? And that is the Word of God. The ageless security blanket of God's love, His Word, wraps itself around our fragile shoulders, tucked firmly in and around the chamber of our hearts. It cools us from life's unbearable heat of pain and distress. It's an all-weather comforter. It's passed every known test imposed on it, by man through centuries. It wears heaven's highest good housekeeping seal approval. Its strength is not enclosed fibers of manufactured steel, but in fine textured threads woven from the very heart of God. God's word. Will you today allow yourself to be wrapped in this security blanket of God's word? I just want to encourage you today with that. Take those points that we looked at this morning and look over them during the week. And remember that God's Word is your security blanket. Just sit in your favorite chair. Get your favorite blankie. Get God's Word and just hold it and wrap yourself up in it. You will be amazed at how your day will be better. You will be amazed at how you will feel the Holy Spirit's presence in your life when you wrap yourself with God's word, the promises of his word, the stories of the Bible, say, Jesus, if you did it in the life of Job, you'll do it in the life of me. If you took care of Moses, you'll take care of me. And he will. God is wonderful, isn't he? Isn't he wonderful? And aren't you thankful for his word? Let's just do something real crazy. Can we just do something real crazy? Crazy in the closing time? Here we go. Get your Bible. Why don't we just kiss it one time? That felt good, didn't it? God's Word. Love it. Heed it. Live your life by it. And as Joshua 1.8 says, your way will be prosperous and you'll have good success when you stay in the Word of God.